leaking gamma radiation, dark rides in parking lots, and horses. Lots and lots of horses. Disneyland is a treasure trove of secrets, but you don't need to map to find them. X marks the spot right here on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog, and today we're digging up some of the best secrets, Easter eggs, and underground tips over at Disneyland and Disney California Adventure. We're West Coast in it today, friends. You'll find something new every time you hit up those parks, but we want you to be ahead of the game so you can be the MVP of all things fun facts. You can even get a PDF download of all these facts dropped into your inbox by sending your email to disneyfoodblog.com slash Disneyland Secrets. We're going to start things off at the newest section of the Disneyland Parks Avengers Campus. You're not going to be bored at Avengers Campus in Disney California Adventure. You've got Spider-Man web slinging from the buildings, $100 sandwiches, and mystical arts performances over at the Ancient Sanctum. So it only makes sense that one of our absolute favorite hidden gems at Avengers Campus is a tree. Three trees to be exact. Stay with me. Outside of the Web Slingers, a Spider-Man Adventure ride building are three trees just minding their own business. The middle tree, however, towers over the other two, and it's not because it ate all its veggies to grow big and strong. On either side of the big kid tree, you'll find a pipe leaking a mysterious green goo. But it's not actually so mysterious because there's a warning label directly above the pipe that reads, Caution, gamma radiation. For all you MCU fans out there, does this sound familiar? Gamma radiation is what turned Dr. Bruce Banner into the Hulk, which explains why the big tree is so much larger than its two neighboring trees. Just don't make this one angry. You won't like it when it's angry. And speaking of making the wrong people angry, this secret tends to get overlooked by first-time guests and magic key pass holders alike. Now, Captain Jack Sparrow sure knows how to make an impression in both the Pirates of the Caribbean films and the dark rides. After you ride Pirates of the Caribbean in Disneyland, take a moment to swing by the Pieces of Eight storefront window. There are a lot of little pirate-themed trinkets and goodies on display, but one of the most suspicious items in the bunch is the voodoo doll lying on the barrel, which seems to resemble the captain himself. But not just any version of Captain Jack. According to the D23 website, this seems to be the Captain Jack from Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest, since the face paint on the doll seems to mirror the face paint he wore when escaping the natives. Bonus secret, if you go ahead and make your way into the gift shop, you'll find another familiar face. Right above the registers and dangling from the chandelier is a white monkey that has a striking resemblance to the rambunctious Jack the Monkey, who also plays a critical role in the Pirates of the Caribbean films. But let's swing on back to Disney California Adventure because ugh, there's so many hidden gems in Avengers Campus that I don't want to leave out of this video. Okay, now it's time to go inside the Web Slingers building and see how Peter Parker and his crew can wow us. Besides just giving our arms a serious workout, man, I was exhausted after that ride. The indoor queue of Web Slingers is cluttered with details, so you're bound to spot something new each time you visit. But I'm gonna zero in on the pre-show room specifically. In this lab, Peter Parker is getting ready for the big open house to show off his latest Web Slinger vehicles. But that's not all that's being worked on here. Check out the whiteboards to find science equations for how webs could be built and fully functional. And these equations, they're not just for show. These are real formulas where the math actually checks out. Don't pull out your calculator or anything. Just trust me on that. Check out Peter Parker's work desk next. It's pretty hard to miss. I mean, he's standing right behind it. See that lamp to the right of Peter? Does it look familiar? Yep, you got it. That's the famous and slightly destructive Pixar Luxo lamp. Okay, one more for you. Notice the Lucky Dog's pizza boxes. Lucky the dog is actually a shout out to Kate Bishop, Hawkeye's partner, who adopts a golden retriever in the Hawkeye comics. There's also a Lucky Dog's Pizza phone number displayed in the queue, and if you call it, it'll actually go through, though the automated voice message will tell you the line has been disconnected. So this next Disneyland secret is kind of a double whammy. Not only is a neat factoid, but it's also gonna help you out tremendously on your upcoming vacation. So sometimes you might wanna skip over the crowds at the Disneyland and DCA front gates. I'm right there with you. As it turns out, there are other ways to enter the Disneyland parks that'll accomplish just that. If you catch a ride on the Disneyland monorail, for instance, it'll plop you right into the heart of Tomorrowland. And if you're staying at the Grand Californian Hotel and Spa, you'll actually be staying in Disney California Adventure. The resort exits out into the Grizzly Peak area so you can start your day off right by flying across the world soaring or getting drenched at Grizzly River Run. But the newest Disney California Adventure entrance is part of Disneyland's other hotel, Disney's Paradise Pier. And by new, I mean 
new, new, like it literally opened up for hotel guests in June. This entrance leads guests into the park between Seaside Souvenirs and Corndog Castle in the Pixar Pier area. By the way, these entrances, they're not shortcuts to getting out of purchasing a park ticket and making park pass reservations. You're still going to need those to access these alternative gateways, just a heads up. But you can also use these entrances whether you're staying at Disneyland owned hotels or not. It doesn't matter. You can still use them. Now, what other sneaky Disney California Adventure section can we uncover next? How about an area that allows you to spy on Cars Land from afar? Even if you're not a magic key holder, you're still going to want to know about this secret lounge, especially since it's about to look totally different very, very soon. This next lounge isn't Club 33 or 21 Royal or even 1901. This is a completely different exclusive and tucked away lounge that's actually more accessible than the other two. The Magic Key Terrace is located in Disney California Adventure on a terrace above the Wine Country Trattoria and is for Magic Key Pass holders only. You Disneylanders know this has been multiple things over the years, and now it's the Magic Key Terrace. So what can you find here? For starters, you'll find solace on these super busy park days. The lounge is for pass holders to take a breather and relax for a bit with tables under wooden pergolas laced with white lights. But Magic Key holders don't have to go up there alone. They're allowed to bring up to six guests to chill for a bit, drink a wine or two, or share an appetizer. By the way, the lobster corn dogs are super, super good. And if you get the mac and cheese, which is also awesome, I recommend ordering it with pork belly instead of bone marrow, but that's just me because I'm not fancy. And you can also enjoy the overhead view of Cars Land up there. Currently, the lounge is in the process of transforming into a hacienda hideaway, which will give the space new furniture, lighting, draperies, stained glass windows, tile work, and murals to give the space more of that fancy private club vibe. I absolutely loved my visit there a few weeks ago, and it really was one of the more relaxing parts of my trip. Disney Imagineers always seem to take their designs to the next level. Even the happy accidents can turn into some of the best Disneyland Easter eggs, like this next secret, for instance. Okay, this one is so much fun and nobody knows about it. Your eyes aren't playing tricks on you, though you might feel like they are when you're dining at the Beauty and the Beast themed Red Rose Tavern. When you've finished up your lunch of flatbreads, the gray stuff, and tavern fries, look up at the glowing exit sign over the front door. Notice anything wrong with this picture? That sign is super uncentered. When the restaurant was being built to be Pinocchio Village House at the time, there was a design flaw that left the exit sign just a little too far to the right, making it uneven with the two archway exits. But that's nothing an Imagineer can't fix, right? So Figaro, the cat from Pinocchio, was originally painted to lasso the sign, making it look like he was trying to pull it in the right direction. But when Beauty and the Beast took over the theming of this counter service in 2017, Sultan the Footstool replaced Figaro and became the new wrangler of the exit sign. Hey, footstool's got to do what a footstool's got to do. And that's not the only happy accident that can be found in Disneyland's design work. Now this one's gonna get you fired up. No, really, you're gonna be feeling rather roasty toasty after this one. Whew, summers in California are hot enough as it is. What's up with the Alice in Wonderland dark ride and why is it trying to cook us? Well, when you get on Alice in Wonderland, the temperatures seem normal at first until you enter that playing card soldier's room. Turns out the Queen of Hearts isn't the only hothead here. Suddenly you are too. Now why? The temperatures are real toasty in here. And if you think about it, a large portion of Alice in Wonderland actually happens to be on the second floor of the ride building where Mr. Toad's Wild Ride occupies the first floor. So according to the D23 website, Alice in Wonderland was Disneyland's first two-level ride-through attraction, but due to spatial constraints, Alice had to be built on top of Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. And you know what room is right under the playing card soldier's room? That's right, it's hell. <laughs> It's Mr. Toad's Wild Ride's hell scene that is really, really hot. If you've ridden through Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, you know what I'm talking about. And if you've ridden through Alice in Wonderland, you know that that room right above is also hot because heat rises, right? There you go. All ride right, secrets are the best. And what better place to find more Disneyland ride secrets than at one of the most iconic dark rides on property? Now we're headed back to the Pirates of the Caribbean ride over there in New Orleans Square. And before you get into all that pillaging and plundering, you're gonna float along a relaxing strip that eases past the Blue Bayou Restaurant. When I say relaxing, I mean you could probably download this ambiance onto your Spotify playlist and sleep to it. The slow waves of water sloshing against your boat, the cicadas chirping, the frogs croaking. But before you exit this scene and enter into the also peaceful cavern section of the Disneyland Pirates of the Caribbean, which I wish was in Disney World because it's really the best part of any Pirates of the Caribbean ride, look above the trees and toward the ceiling for a chance of spotting a shooting star. Just don't forget to make that wish. 
which I hope is that Disney World rethemes their Pirates of the Caribbean to add caverns, because that's my wish. But the dark ride secrets don't stop there. If we didn't tell you about this Disneyland secret, you may have never figured out that it happens every single time you ride this popular dark ride. The Indiana Jones Adventure, appropriately placed in the Adventureland section of Disneyland, takes you on a windy, bumpy journey to escape the wrath of the temple god Mara. You'll accelerate past treacherous sections, like an unstable bridge threatening to give out, a chamber with mummies you hope and pray aren't cursed like everything else in this temple seems to be, a deep, dark corridor with probably poisonous darts shooting your direction, and hold on, look out for that giant boulder hurtling your way. Also, you also drive over an old parking lot, though you'd never realize it if you didn't already know. The area where Indiana Jones Adventure resides now used to be part of the employee parking lot and not actually part of the park itself. And you know how the queue line on this one takes forever and a day? Well, once you're in the spike room, you'll be walking underneath the Disneyland railroad tracks. Now, another quick note about Indiana Jones, you know how your ride is different every time based on which of the three doors your Jeep drives you through at the beginning of your adventure, youth, riches, or knowledge? The Jeep itself is also preloaded with a bunch of movements that have the potential to create almost 160,000 possible combos. So that keeps things fresh every time you ride, even if the mummies surrounding you are not very fresh. All right, everyone keeping up out there. We've still got a few more secrets to go, but don't forget you can get them all sent your way by heading over to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Disneyland Secrets after the last secret is spilled. Who's ready for some epic Cars Land Easter eggs? There's just something about Radiator Springs Racers that makes me want to drop everything and go on a month-long cross-country road trip on Route 66. And that's all thanks to the incredible design work Imagineers put into this ride. But the way these Imagineers signed their work is a little unconventional and yet totally appropriate for a Cars-themed attraction. Lots of the ride vehicles have special license plates featuring the initials of Imagineers who helped this ride come to life. But the initialing doesn't stop there. The tractors over at Mater's also have letters that represent initials and birthdays of key contributors to the Cars Land project. So the Imagineers and Pixar animators that worked on it are built right into the ride. This might be hard to believe, but Cars Land hasn't always hit it out of the ballpark with its ride design. So let's expose a secret that Disneyland would rather us forget about. Are you part of the few who remember this Cars Land ride? Okay, forget those state-of-the-art, mind-blowing technological marvels like Rise of the Resistance. All Disney's ever really wanted to accomplish is a successful flying saucer ride, and they just can't seem to make it happen. Between 1961 and 1966, Disneyland has a flying saucers ride over in Tomorrowland, but these futuristic bumper cars turned out to be a bust because the ride was constantly under maintenance and frankly just not worth the wait. But in 2012, when Cars Land opened a DCA, Disney tried to bring a similar ride design back with a little ride called Luigi. Luigi's Flying Tires. This was the original attraction at Casa Della Tires that had guests floating around on tire-shaped bumper vehicles. But much like the flying saucers from the 60s, guests weren't too thrilled with this one, nor were they impressed with the super low capacity that led to extremely high wait times. Way too high for a bumper car ride. So in 2015, the ride closed up shop and was replaced with Luigi's Rollick and Roadsters just a year later. And with the new dancing cars ride came the first ever trackless vehicle tech to open at a Disney park in the U.S. On the flip opposite side of things, there's a feature in Disneyland that works quite well, but nobody ever gets the chance to see it. Finally, time for some Sleeping Beauty castle secrets. Now this is one of my favorite secrets in Disneyland. There's a lot more to Disneyland Sleeping Beauty Castle than just being the older and smaller comparison to Magic Kingdom Cinderella Castle. For instance, you got that whole Sleeping Beauty walkthrough that tells the tale of Princess Aurora through animated 3D window scenes. Better yet, there's no queue line to experience this attraction most of the time. But there's a lot to be said about Sleeping Beauty Castle's exterior as well. Take a look at the drawbridge, for instance. The castle drawbridge isn't just for looks. It is fully functional. That being said, the bridge has only been publicly lowered for guests twice. First was Disneyland's official opening back in 1955, and second was Fantasyland's rededication in 1983. Speaking of Fantasyland, some of the best kept secrets are hiding out in Walt's favorite land. King Arthur Carousel is more than just a ride that goes round and round and round and round, and here's why. Okay, I promised you horses, we've got horses. The horses of King Arthur Carousel in Disneyland are like a team of football players. Bet you never thought of that comparison before. But much like how not every member of a football team is gonna be out and playing on the field at once, the King Arthur Carousel horses also tag team out when some of them need a break and a little freshening up. Though there are 85 horses in total, only 72 take the carousel stage at a time. 
Disney uses these little horse vacations as an opportunity to repair them, sand them, refinish them, and repaint them to keep them looking good. And of those 85 horses, every single one of them has their own name. You used to be able to pick up the complete list of horse names from City Hall on Main Street USA, but that might not be the case for your next visit. However, there is one name we can remember forever and always, and that's Jingles. Back in 2008, Jingles underwent an extreme Mary Poppins makeover. Now the horse circles around the carousel proudly as a dedication to the OG Mary Poppins herself, Julie Andrews. Jingles was Walt Disney's favorite horse on the carousel. After all, she is the lead horse who knows how to rock rows upon rows of Jingle Bells. In 2005, Jingles was completely painted gold to celebrate Disneyland's 50th anniversary. And in 2008, Jingles underwent another extreme makeover. This time, it was to celebrate Julie Andrews, the OG Mary Poppins, and her 44 years of service to the Disney company. Imagineers thought that dedicating the lead carousel horse to the actress would be a fitting gift of appreciation, considering Mary Poppins had ridden a similar carousel horse during one of the many famous scenes from the film. So the team got to work painting jingles with blues, pinks, and golds while also adding Julie Andrews' initials alongside other Mary Poppins-themed accents to the horse's design. In order to make jingles a true dedication to Julie Andrews, Imagineers also created another jingles alongside the original one, but this second jingles was a miniature version that Disney Imagineers gave to the actress for her to keep. Walt always seems to find a way to remain part of Disneyland's story even now. You just have to be willing to not only look for his presence, but listen for it. Have you ever heard Walt Disney give a speech in Disneyland? Before you say, uh, no, Hold on a sec, because that just might be a lie, especially if you visited New Orleans Square before. New Orleans Square is a happening place, and you've got Pirates of the Caribbean, Haunted Mansion, Blue Bayou, and of course the New Orleans Square train station for the Disneyland Railroad. There are four train stations around Disneyland, but the station in New Orleans Square has an extra special secret. And this isn't a secret you've got to see to believe, it's one you've got to hear. Now when you're standing there waiting for the train, you're going to hear that clicking sound, and it's going to sound like... Morse code. And as a lot of you know, that's the sound of the telegraph typing out a message in Morse code. And that message, of course, translates to a portion of Walt Disney's speech on the opening day of Disneyland. And now for a Disneyland secret that only the true fans will know about. You know who you are. And what's a Disneyland secrets video without giving a shout out to our favorite teeny tiny tree man hiding in Adventureland. The little man of Disneyland is named Patrick Begora, and he made his first appearance not in the Disneyland park, but in one of the Disney Little Golden Books, which according to Disney was published the same year Disneyland opened. Patrick is a leprechaun who now spends his days in an itty bitty house at the base of a tree in Disneyland. See for yourself Patrick's humble tree abode is near the entrance of the Indiana Jones adventure at the base of the tree trunk tangled within the roots. There you'll see a teeny door, a teeny window, a teeny smokestack, and a teeny porch light. If you see Patrick, could you get a picture for us please and thank you? We've never seen him before. Okay, feels good to know all the insider facts around Disneyland. And I know there are so many more. Don't worry, we'll get to them. If you'd like to check out Disney World's plethora of super sneaky secrets, we've got a whole DFB playlist already set up and ready for you to watch. Because the secrets start coming and they don't stop coming. Thanks everyone for listening and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog and we'll see you real soon.